I'm Chief Ed Bradley from the Plymouth, Massachusetts Fire Department. And we're down here at the E1 plant in Ocala, Florida, doing a final inspection on our Cyclone Pumper. Uh, this is going to be the 12th vehicle that we have bought from uh, E1, and we now have our entire uh, front fleet, uh, our all E1s protecting that town, including aerials, tank trucks, and wildland interface trucks. Plymouth, Massachusetts was founded by the Pilgrims back in 1620, so it's a 400-year-old uh, city. So there's a lot of small uh, roadways that they were cow paths at one time, became roadways. Um, we serve 106 square miles. We are the largest municipality in the state of Massachusetts. And we run out of seven stations that are strategically placed around town. This compartment was specially built for our specification by E1 so that we could, it would hold all of our battery operated uh, extrication equipment. Seeing as we have only seven stations cover 106 square miles, some of those stations actually cover 20 to 30 square miles by themselves. So when they leave the barn, they have to have everything that they uh, possibly need for any type of call, whether it be a water rescue or medical call or motor vehicle access out on one of the interstates. So this is built to our height and our, our specifications. It'll, all of our uh, battery operating equipment will fit in here and all the blocking and chains. And so this back compartment is just for the rescue, um, hydraulic rescue equipment. And again, it it's, uh, meets our needs perfectly. We chose not to go on this back compartment with the roll-up doors. Um, we went with the barn doors. <clears throat> One, we wanted to make sure, especially out on the highway, we had as much uh, of the um, uh, visibility as we could. And the other is in the harsh New England weather, uh, when you're driving down the roads with a lot of salt and sand, sometimes the roll-up doors get a little difficult to deal with, especially when on the back end of the truck where all that mist and all that debris is collecting on the back of the truck. The barn doors work perfect for us, whereas on the other sides of the truck, we're using the roll-up doors to make it easier for the, cr the crews to get their gear out. On this truck, as well as two of the others that serve the southern end of town uh, in, in Plymouth, 60% of the town does not have municipal water nor fire hydrants. So we wanted to make sure that those crews had as much water on board, but still have a truck that was maneuverable. We made sure we stuck with a 188 inch wheelbase, but this truck has a 1,000 gallon tank and another a capacity for another 30 gallons of foam. So when they're arriving on scene, they have a 1,000 gallons to begin with right off the bat. We also had them built in on both sides of the truck, left and right, this gauge monitor. Now, Years ago, especially if you only had 500 or 750 gallons of water on board, if a crew was operating inside a building on fire, they'd be constantly calling out to the engineer, how much water have I got? The officer's trying to make a decision. <clears throat> Should I continue on and make a more aggressive attack, or am I at the point where I need to get out? Now, no matter where you are on the fire ground, you're going to be able to see these, and it's going to show you how much water's in that tank at a glance. They don't have to keep calling on the radio and asking the engineer what they've got left. Look out the window of the home, well, the officer, from his standpoint, wherever he is, he's going to be able to see that, that gauge tank uh, at a glance. In the cab, we have had built a medical cabinet uh, with electricity to charge either on shore power or on the generator power while the truck is, is moving along, that they can keep all their medical gear, their AED, uh, any of the drugs that we carry, and they're in the, the cab locked up. And when it's in the barn, of course, it's, it's weather controlled. Along with COVID, we brought a new um, awareness to being able to clean the cabs and make the trucks safer for the next crew or in between calls. So we changed the seats and we went from a uh, cloth, heavy duty cloth seat to something that's much easier. Like this, it's, it's a special type of vinyl, but it's easy to wash down. It's easy to disinfect. And the same thing happens with the doors. The stainless steel is much easier to clean. And again, disinfects. So we have a one of the an excellent deal like Greenwood Emergency Vehicles. They've been excellent to work with. And once he gets to know you, um, and, and, and we're building truck after truck, they already know ahead of time what we're looking for. So he can give us pricing uh, easy and um, quickly get get that knowing, knowing the, uh, the modifications and the different options that we're going to want. If I was dealing with E1, we've always had a great relationship, whether it be the engineers or the on-site people, or if we need tech help later on. Uh, like, as I said, we built now seven pumping trucks, a heavy rescue, uh, an aerial truck, a tank truck, and um, a wildland interface. And all those times, we want to make sure we build it so that we're going to get the full ISO rating we can. And we want to meet all of our NFPA regulations, but we also want to make it work for us in our area. And I know that what works for us isn't going to work for someone else and vice versa. But the engineers here have been great about getting us the water tank capacity we want, the type of, of winches uh, that, that we're running on the front, like on our, our uh, wildland truck, or when we're building a 100-foot uh, metro aerial, 
just the way we want to set up because we had to carry, we wanted to be able to carry water and a pump, we wanted to be a true Quint. Because I can't afford in a town my size to have a crew in a truck that can't handle any type of call that they're given on the radio. So down here uh, at, at E1, they've been able to always make sure that um, anything we were looking for, they were able to put into the truck. Uh, we sit down to pre-build, and if there's any options that we're not sure about, we can stop what we're doing, walk out on the floor, they'll find us two or three different um, variations, and we can choose which one we think, from looking at it, seeing it hands-on, which one is going to work best for us and proceed from there. They're always here ready for us to run it up on the, uh, uh, the, the pump site and to take it for a ride until we get a good feel of it. Um, and we don't find many problems with the truck. Some things that we ask for, sometimes it's more or less just um, uh, verbiage, and they didn't understand when we wrote something down in pre-build how it was supposed to come out, and they always fix it. We've been, it's been great. As I said, this is, this is our 12th truck, so obviously there's no problems. We'll, we'll be back again.